Bismillahirrahmanirrahim dear students uh, once again assalamu alaikum with the new and uh, next lecture on the topic uh, of uh, this one cultural and ideological turn actually the topic would be like this cultural and ideological turns in translation studies what when who how and why uh, that we uh, are talking about the turn in the cultural in the in, in translation studies which is called cultural turn or ideological turn we have uh, adopted this uh, chapter from the book introducing translation studies by jeremy monday chapter number eight with this title cultural and ideological turn uh, of course uh, in this page uh, you can see the chapter details uh, uh, where the uh, author is talking about key concepts and then presenting the key texts on which he based uh, his uh, writing in this chapter and then introduction translation as rewriting uh, red color shows that we will talk about these four things in this uh, in this presentation but the chapter also contains translation and gender, uh, post-colonial translation theory, the ideologies uh, of the theorists and other perspectives on translation and ideology. And of course, the chapter also contains a case study, a summary and further reading, a discussion and search points. Uh, but as I said, we shall be discussing all these remaining parts. But in this uh, presentation we shall also we shall only focus on these uh, four points key concepts in the whole chapter and key text of the whole chapter but the introduction of the chapter and then the main uh, purpose or the main point would be translation as rewriting there is a complete theory presented by one of the translation scholars uh, on this aspect and then the story is uh, you know going on and still going on about it about this so let's start the key concepts in the chapters uh, the the cultural term as a term used for the move towards the analysis of translation from a cultural studies angle not from the linguistic studies angle rewriting lee fever name of a scholar examines translation as rewriting and the ideological tensions around the text i mean the target text created text on the basis of translation gender and translation the feminist translation project uh, a term which gained uh, popularity in the literature and the translation of gay language of course i'm not going to discuss the last part of this uh, this number three Number four, post-colonial translation theories and role of translation in the colonization process and the image of colonized, what translation, what role translation played in the colonization process and, and how the image of the colonized were depicted in the writings of the colonizers. And then interventionist approach by translators, uh, there is another theory uh, proposed by one of the scholars and theorists writing on translations have various agendas of their own of course a point for the concern and for the researchers and the students of translation studies uh, the key text for the chapter uh, my dear student always remember you are it's you are research students in, in translation studies so you uh, uh, give good attention to these key texts as well because in the future uh, some of them can become a very useful uh, source for you for your research. Uh, Basnet uh, S and Lee Fever, it, the book was edited in 1990, Translation, History and Culture and it was published in London and New York simultaneously. Again Basnet S and Trividi they edited another book in 1999 uh, under the title Postcolonial Translation Theory and Practice. Both uh, cities contributed in publishing of this uh, book. 
Cronian M in 1996 translating Ireland translation languages cultures and it was published by the Cock and Harvey K 1998 and again 2004 translating camp talk gay identities and cultural transfer and uh, you know this uh, this article is published within the Lawrence Veron Minotti's book which was edited by him uh, on these pages uh, uh, the other texts are Lee Fever again 1992 translation rewriting and the manipulation of literary fame uh, Niranjana uh, citing translation history post-structuralism and colonial context uh, Simon S. Uh, Simon Sherry 1996 uh, gender in translation cultural identity and the politics of transmission and then Spivak Gyatri 1993 the politics of translation again this article is published primarily in uh, Lawrence Venoti's uh, edited book on translation studies so these are the key uh, text used by the author by the uh, by Jeremy Mande for preparation of uh, this very important chapter for our course introduction uh, introduction we can discuss these points uh, uh, Bazinet and Leifewers they criticized and they, they dismissed the linguistic theories of translation we know uh, in the early development of, uh, of the discipline of translation studies the main focus on the linguistic analysis the contrastive analysis various aspects of uh, the source or the target language elements and then uh, comparing or contrasting them and then finding out the mistakes or finding out uh, uh, the equivalence and finding out the shapes and finding out different you know things that are related to linguistics in general so they dismiss the linguistic theories of translations and they say that you know the area have moved from word to text as unit but not beyond they say it is almost you know the repetition of of the same elements of of the languages in in in, in source language and the target language they also dismiss the painstaking comparison between originals and the translations without considering text in its cultural environment you know they they basically um, they, they basically criticized on the state of affairs or state of research that was there at that time in the area of translation studies because most of the time uh, linguistic theories dominated the whole area again uh, Bazinet and Leaf was the, they uh, gave these ideas that the focus on interaction between translation and culture uh, is is the primary uh, need and the focus on the way in which culture impacts translation and also constraints translation should be the main uh, purpose of uh, research in translation studies also there among their ideas was focus on the larger issues of context history and convention uh, in a simple word we can say uh, their ideas were revolving around one thing that that, that the translation research in translation studies should get rid of the linguistic analysis contrastive and comparative analysis and should give more attention to words these aspects uh, history culture convention and so on uh, among their ideas that image of literature that is created by anthologies commentaries film adaptations and translations an image created by institutions that are involved in those process you know move from translation as text to translation as culture and politics was called the translation turned by uh, the name was given by Mary Snell Hornby another translation scholar and he coined, she coined this term the cultural turn in translation in translation studies uh, Although the uh, uh, Bazinet and Leaf were, as we will see uh, later on as well, they are talking about the literature and they are talking about the anthologies and they are also talking about the film adaptations that how the culture in general uh, influencing the translation activities. So let's uh, come to the point number four, which is uh, translation as rewriting. 
and credit goes to this person this uh, scholar uh, Andre Leaf uh, uh, and you can see the date 1945 and 1996 and uh, we need to know a little about Leaf uh, this is uh, his complete name Leifer Elophones Leif, I mean Andre Leif Elophones Leifer worked in comparative literature departments at Belgium then in USA at the University of Texas and his work in translation studies this is very important because we will take now uh, some time out to understand this Polish system his work in translation studies developed out of his strong links with Polish system theory so from now on we will have some slides on Polish system uh, theories so uh, uh, Polish system theory was developed in 1970s by uh, another uh, scholar in, in in the area of uh, comparative literature and translation studies, Etemar Zohar. Uh, he says that a literary work uh, is here not studied in isolation, but as part of the literary system. Uh, for example, the story writing is a literary work, or the novel writing is a literary work. So there is a complete system which is called literary system and every uh, part story writing is surrounded by the other parts of the whole system. So the literary uh, system is a system which uh, um, a system of functions of the literary order which are in continual interaction with other orders. From within the literary system uh, there are different parts and they are interacting and then the literary system itself is interacting with other a system in the society like the economic system like the social system the education system the government system political system so he concludes uh, Etemar concluded that literature is thus part of the social cultural literary and uh, historical framework it does not function uh, in isolation it functions in interaction uh, with other uh, systems in a particular society so we can also visualize the poly system uh, theory with the help of this uh, image where we in the center we say the the translated uh, literature is part of the tra translation literary system and uh, this is surrounded by the literary system social system historical system political system so it is actually uh, uh, being influenced by the system and to some extent also influencing the other systems uh, in some of uh, the aspect. So Etmar Zohar emphasizes that translated literature operates as a system in the way that uh, targeted language selects works for the translation. What, should, what work should be selected for translation is influenced by within the factors that are dominant in the whole system. The translation norms, behavior, and policies are influenced by other core systems as well. What is the most important uh, uh, topic uh, where the book should be translated in a country, in a system? He focuses on the relationship between all uh, these systems. That was the uh, that is the you know brief of the translation uh, poly system theory, and uh, Leifer was very much influenced by this poly system. Uh, theory presented by Etemar. So Leifer in his later work on translation and culture uh, represents a bridging point to the cultural turn. His ideas are most fully developed in his book. This remember the title of the book translation rewriting and the manipulation of literary fame. Remember uh, uh, Etemar and Leifer uh, their focus was on the literary translations literary translations although this can uh, be uh, be applied on other areas and of course a uh, lot of research has been produced on the basis of uh, this uh, this concept of uh, rewriting or theory of rewriting by Leifer uh, in other areas in other uh, text types so now we are faced with this question what is rewriting uh, a term used by uh, Leifer. So, what 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 does uh, he mean by rewriting? Uh, 
but you can read here I'm going to read it loud uh, text produced on the basis of another text text produced which is target text on the basis of another text which is uh, source text has the intention of adapting that other text to a certain ideology or to a certain politics and usually to both this is a simple definition but this is a very precise definition presented by Leifberg. Uh, this target text has the intention of adapting or carrying or making it near to the text to a certain ideology or to a certain politics and usually to both. This is his main idea of free writing and uh, if I have uh, you know added some examples after this immediately and keeping this concept with this concept clearly in your mind see these uh, uh, few examples uh, this uh, paragraph has been taken from one of the books about the human rights published by United Nations and here the you know declaration of human rights as a common standard of achievement for all people and all nations to the end that every individual and every organ of society keeping this declaration constantly in mind shall strive by teaching and education to promote respect for these rights and freedoms and by progressive measures national and international to secure their universal and effective recognition and observance both among the peoples of, uh, of member states themselves and among the peoples of territories under their jurisdiction so the whole paragraph is, uh, is here but our focus is on the word teaching here teaching and education to promote respect for these rights teaching now this uh, uh, booklet was was translated into Urdu here in Pakistan and uh, it was like this Insani hukuk ka yaalwi manchur tamam aqwam ke vaste usool e maqsad ka mushtarak mayar hoga taake har fard aur muashre ka har idara is manchur ko hamesha pesh e nazar rakhte hue taaleem wa tabliq ke zariya in hukuk aur azadiyon ka ehtiram kare aur unhe قومی اور بیل قومی کاروائیوں کے ذریعے ممبر ملکوں میں اور ان قوموں میں جو ممبر ملکوں کا ماتحت ہوں منوانے کے لیے بتدریج کوشش کر سکیں So the word teaching has been translated here تبلیغ as we can see in the next slide by teaching and education to promote respect for these rights So teaching is, uh, is تدریج basically but the word تبلیغ it has a religious connotation in, in Islam, in Arabic and in, in Urdu as well. So the question arises, was the teaching, uh, world teaching difficult? I think the answer is no. Or was it translating teaching into Arabic, you know, was too difficult? It was very easy because the word Tadris is uh, easily available and it is used and people understand this quickly. But why the translator has uh, relied on the word tabligh instead of tadris here um, mind you this uh, uh, this belongs to our one of uh, political era where the dominant uh, uh, narrative was to implement islamic sharia in uh, in the country that i'm talking about the ziaul haqs era in pakistan where uh, you know islamization process was the was at was the top priority of all the institutions and the media and everyone was talking about the islamization of uh, of this or that or islamization of the judicial system islamization of the education system i believe that when this booklet was translated in that era the word tabligh was uh, uh, either it was the ideology of the translator uh, himself or herself or it was the dominant ideology of the state which influenced the translators and then translators landed on this translation and translating the word teaching by tabligh with tabligh which of course is very very obvious is uh, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a you know in a simple word we can say the cultural impact uh, of uh, of the translators culture 
or the cultural impact of the whole uh, ideology, dominant ideology in the country uh, brought this result or brought this change in the translation. Another example is taken uh, from, uh, from the media text. Uh, we have one uh, news item uh, on breaking news by the French news agency. Tens of Iraqi civilians were killed and injured in an American air attack on the city of Fallujah. So how the word killed here in this news item has been translated in one source. We see that في خبر عاجل لوكالة الأنباء الفرنسية قتلة وجرح عشرات العراقيين المدنيين في هجوم جوي أمريكي على مدينة الفلوجة. Now in this translation we can say it, uh, it is uh, by the BBC, maybe the other European sources they translated this. Of course the translation looks very fine. Uh, faithful to the killed and Kutila. But uh, see the other translation which of course uh, took place within the Arab world where uh, the people thought that the Americans are in, invading Iraq and their uh, existence in Iraq actually is Ill illegitimate according to the United Nations uh, uh, you know, human rights. And uh, now see the impact of the translation. The word killed has been translated with Ustushida. Uh, whereas the linguistic aspects are very clear uh, about the word killed. But the translator uh, himself or herself by virtue of his or her ideology or by virtue of his ideas and uh, political views about what is happening in this context and also keeping view the uh, the, his or her readers, those who will be reading this uh, news item, uh, has uh, has translated this with the word Ustushida. Now we can easily, you know, decipher uh, the cultural impact uh, 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 that has, uh, you know, uh, changed the translation of the word kill. Another example. And this example has been taken from a very famous book of uh, The Clash of Civilizations uh, by uh, Huntington. And this book was translated into Hazibo Matasadum by Muhammad Ahsan Bhatt into Urdu. And there is a, a small paragraph where uh, the writer says that some Westerners, including President Bill Clinton, have argued that the West does not have problems with Islam but only with what Islamist extremist. 1400 years of history demonstrate otherwise. Of course, he continues talking about uh, this otherwise and against, of course, the, uh, the, what the Muslims believe that they are or Islam is. So the translator, I think, was uh, encountered with this problem and he demonstrate otherwise he said he translated this part of the paragraph uh, uh, we all know urdu uh, you understand urdu and you can when you read this you don't know the original text so when you read this dusri andaz se wazahat karte hain i think the intensity of the uh, of the other point of view which is totally opposite of what let's say the Bill Clinton is saying or other people are saying uh, is very clear. Whereas the original author wanted to say okay, whatever these people are saying like Bill Clinton or whatever those who are talking about that the Islam is a peaceful religion is this that. The 1400 years of the history demonstrate otherwise that when the happenings and the events that took place this is the writer's point of view but the translator of course because he is translating this book or because he does not agree with the of course views of the writer originally culture cultural views or the ideology that is dominant or the belief system that is there in the mind of, the, of in the society or the mind of the translator they have of course caused this instead of K Ulat Batate and Cho many fourteen hundred years of history, uh Chodaso Salki Jo Tarihe wo is in Batoke Ulat Batate or Ya iske Ulat. So um, we can very clearly see that the translator uh the translators by virtue of his ideology 
and by virtue of his uh, his uh, cultural values has uh, has relied on this uh, translation dusre andaaz se wazahat karte hain and has maybe uh, you know uh, decreased the intensity of uh, original writers views in urdu language so leafer now we come back to leafer once again or rewriting again leafer focuses on the examination of factors of course after this uh, explaining the concept of uh, rewriting so he examines what are the factors that systematically govern the reception acceptance or rejection of the literary text either the readers accept when they receive the text they accept or they they reject so he has mentioned the uh, factors such as uh, power and ideology institution and manipulation these are the factors that influence reception acceptance or rejection of literary text so people involved in such power positions are the ones as rewriting or rewriters or the ones as rewriting literature and governing its consumption by the readers so they are dictating or they are holding the power they are exercising the power of all this rewriting motivation for c rise is for such writing for this writing uh, can be ideological one or poetological conforming to or rebelling against the dominant preferred ideological politics the last point says that it's not necessary that you try to conform uh, with what is prevalent in your society in your culture in your ideology sometime the translators they also rebel against what is dominant and of course they the, the way they translate the these texts literary texts of course in the in the perspective of leafers writing when they translate of course they try to bring a change so they they translate translate in a different way again influenced by their own ideology or in their own uh, dominant views so here leafwer has uh, brought um, uh, example of uh, edward fitzgerald very famous uh, uh, translator who translated uh, persian poet umar khayyam and uh, fitzgerald considered yani you know, these are he himself uh, wrote about this he considered persian language inferior and then he took liberties in the translation in order to improve on the original he thought that the persian language this is the era of colonization and the colonizers they took this in, in this way that the the languages of the colonized the cultures of the colonized the lifestyles of the colonized their education system all everything is inferior to them so uh with this uh, view they took persian he took persian language inferior and then he took liberties in the translation into see the claim improve on the original and then the second purpose which he claimed as well in, in the preface of his book to conform to the expected western literary convention it is just like you know uh, making the uh, persian text acceptable reception and acceptance acceptable to the western readership and in the process of making it acceptable he brought lot of changes he manipulated the text he translated the text in a way way which you know conform these uh, their conventions uh, this is the example given by so you can see here the edward fitzgerald uh, in a, on a on a lighter mode we can say this uh, umar khayyam with his uh, beard with his uh, you know um the, the dressing and all that try to convert umar khayyam the way we see the picture of edward fitzgerald i mean the way he translated persian uh, his persian poetry into english uh, we can also say analogy is that he just wanted to present umar khayyam uh, in the way that the the european accept him as we, as the as we can see the picture of Fitz, fitzgerald so what are the main conclusions by leafer out of uh, this analysis of the fitzgerald that the same he says that the same basic process of rewriting is at work he also identified other areas 
uh, uh, along with translation uh, he says that the same uh, basic process of rewriting is also prevalent in historiography in anthologization in criticism in editing and uh, so translation is the most recognizable type of rewriting why because the the readers of the translated text they don't know the original text or original culture so they only solely blind to them and they only solely rely on what they have in front of them so translation is the most influential because it is able to project the image of the other and this other in this case is mum is cannot tell the reality and in this case you know it is the most influential and most important uh, area uh, the literary uh, system translation uh, is controlled by three main factors uh, number one is the professionals in the literary system number two the patronage outside the literary system and then uh, dominant poetic professionals within the literary system of course when we say the professionals within the literary system we are talking about writers of short stories writers of uh, 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 essay writers and writers of novels and so on you know genres of different uh, literary hours the poets and so on the critics and the reviewers and the publishers they are the professionals within the literary system and the patronage patronage outside the literary system patronage coming from different institutions patronage coming from the state patronage coming from uh, from some influential individuals but they are not professionals within the literary system and also the dominant poetic by the dominant poetic uh, he means or we also mean the term it, it is used for uh, what are the do dominant poetic for for writing a uh, short story what are the what are the forms and conventions acceptable convention for writing a short story for writing a novel for writing an essay for writing a poem and so on so there are uh, uh, certain standards that are acceptable uh, to the critics and the writers and the readers of a particular language are called dominant poetic. Uh, we can also have this image to visualize uh, these three factors, the translation as rewriting and is being influenced by, uh, surrounded these three factors. Professionals, uh, you know, uh, within the literary system and also uh, patronage outside the literary system and dominant uh, 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 poetics. A little detail about the professionals in the literary system. They are the critics, reviewers whose comments affect the reception of a work. Teachers who often decide whether a book is studied, taught or not. Translators who decide on the poetics, what should be translated. The patronage outside the literary system, the influential and powerful individuals or groups or institutions publishers, media, a political class or party, uh, political party of course, uh, national uh, literary academies, academic journals, educational establishments and so on. They are the patronage outside the literary system. And uh, he has also talked about the components of uh, this patronage. This uh, one component is called ideological component which is general sense of the ideology and then the status component where uh, the patronage comes in the in the case of uh, status giving to the status and also the economic component of course in case of uh, uh, what should be paid to the translators uh, the ideological component uh, this uh, this constraint the choice of subject and the form of its presentation of course what can we select for translation and what cannot be translated into a certain language uh, for a certain readers in a certain time. Patronage is basically ideologically focused. Of course, the patronage, which is outside uh, the uh, the the come, is basically ideologically focused. The status uh, component is uh, in return for economic payment uh, from a benefactor on. Uh, the literary press, the beneficiary is often uh, expected to conform to the person's expectation, of course, or a membership of a particular group involves uh, having behaving in a way 
uh, conducive to supporting that group is the status component and the economic content, the payments and and also royalties and so on and so forth. And teachers are also paid uh, or funded by patrons, e.g. the newspaper, publishers, universities and governments and influential individuals as well. Kinds of There are two kinds of patronage. Uh, undifferentiated patronage when all three components are provided by the same person or group the ideological or the status or economic and differentiated patronage when the three components are not dependent on one and other for example the the ideological component or the status component and the economic component is provided by one institution in pakistan so this is what indifferentiated Patronage, but the differentiated patronage would be that the ideological component is coming from one uh, one side, and uh, the status component is coming from the other, and the economic component, of course, is the source is different. So it is differentiated patronage. Okay, the dominant uh, the dominant poetics. We can come to the third factor, which is we have discussed so far. We are talking about this. Let me go back to show you. We are talking about actually this, the professionals and the, the patronage and now the dominant poetic. So third factor is the dominant poetic and dominant poetic is the literary uh, devices, a range of uh, genres, symbols and uh, light motifs and prototypical situations and characters, concept about the role of literature literature and social system in which it exists, enforcement by institutions for dominant poetics, certain works elevated, other rejected. The, here, you know, he is talking about that the sometimes the dominant poetics also get changed when the whole ideology changes and uh, hence, you know, things takes different form. Okay, when the dominant po poetics change, so some reach the exalted position of a classic later some other are rejected uh, we can discuss some examples inside the classroom uh, and the poetics ideology intentions and translation in leafers work is the claim is on every level of the translation process it can be shown that if linguistic considerations enter into conflict with considerations of an ideological and or poetological nature the later tend to win out we have seen examples of uh, of uh, translating teaching uh, with the tabligh we have also seen the translation of uh, uh, kutila uh, as ustashida and uh, i think uh, we shall see some uh, other examples here uh, that has been discussed by jeremy monday himself so the other claim is that a translator's ideology or ideology of the patron or poetological considerations, translation strategy and the solutions to specific problems, of course, they, they dictate for devising the translation strategy which conform with the dominant, uh, you know, the requirement that are requirement, the dominant ideology, dominant agenda, dominant politics, dominant uh, uh, objectives by the of course uh, these uh, uh, the keeping in view these three factors and of course the type of pattern patronage that is available uh, this example has been discussed in in the book in the chapter so uh, I, it has been so you can see here this example uh, aristophanes is uh, the greek writer is a comic playwright of ancient athens greek and he is considered as the father of comedy at that time and he lived the era that has been written here uh, he uh, wrote this uh, Lysistrata uh, is, is a comic account of uh, one woman's extraordinary mission to end the war and Lysistrata uh, the name of, uh, of, of, of that woman is Lysistrata uh, uh, persuades the woman of Greek, Greece to with withhold sexual privileges from their husband and lovers as a mean 
of forcing the men to negotiate peace, a strategy, however, that inflames the battle between the sexes. So, Sparta uh, was a prominent city-state in ancient Greece. A little uh, background information. Uh, I would not, uh, of course, read these uh, things out. You will read them because the example is there in the book. So, you can see the example here. But uh, the analysis is on one word. So, for the trans English translation, Leaf lists English translations over the years that have rendered this word into, uh, into this. Some of them, they translated this word with this membrum, others the viril, others nose, leg, handle, and lifeline. And also those who have translated this word with these things, all with just the factory footnotes. So by an analysis our uh, analysis of this uh, uh, we you know we can conclude or leave actually concluded that the such indirect euphemistic translations are indicative of the ideology dominant at a certain time in a certain society so there are words which are taboos in a in a, in a, in a culture and can the, this word especially has been translated into English uh, in a euphemistic way, in a mild way, in a very, you know, uh, in a very uh, soft way, uh, of course, because the dominant culture, the dominant ideology was such that it did not allow the translators and it did not allow the publishers, it did not allow, uh, you know, the, the, allow the translator to translate it as it is. Uh, although the literal translation is this, but it did not allow the the whole uh, ideology that it should be translated as it is. So it was translated uh, euphemistically uh, in a mild way, in a very soft way. Why it was that? Uh, because of the ideology, dominant ideology. But my point is here that suppose if if it is translated now in the Western culture, in the English culture, I think they would not. Uh, find it difficult to translate as it is without any euphemistic techniques. Okay, dear students, with this, uh, our talk about the rewriting has finished. And your next writing is the next theory, which is translation and gender. So read the, the uh, everything which is about the translation under this section, translation and gender, in this book, in this chapter. And inshallah, we shall discuss uh, all these things um, uh, in the next uh, lecture but i would uh, ex i would expect that um, today when we have face to face meeting we will have very good interesting uh, discussion especially on this the concept of rewriting and how it is uh, you know uh, you know it is uh, it is uh, creating a lot of other questions and those questions are leading the researchers in the area of translation to to do more research in other aspects and to bring more theories in in the uh, translation studies this is of course about this and also I, i'm also expecting to have very good discussion on the other uh, lecture which i delivered yesterday take very good care of yourself thank you very much for being with me assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh